Welcome to the Demarcation Media 10K Special. Today, I am going to be judging all of the photo entries that you guys sent in for the 10K photo competition. And you guys absolutely killed it. There are 43 entries to look at. 43. That's kind of a lot. This might be a long video. Uh, we did have some, I guess, some confusion on the rules. A couple of you guys sent in like four photos, uh, which the rules were one photo. Um, I also had a Jazzwares photo submitted, which this was a Mega Constructs contest. So fortunately I can't put that one in. And then I did get a couple like late, but I'm putting those in anyway, just cause the deadline was really just so that I could plan for when to record. So since they came in before I started recording, then I'm putting them in. Uh, next time I run a competition like this, I will make sure to write out the rules a little bit more clearly. Those ones were kind of on the fly. This whole thing was a little bit on the fly, but hey, that's the fun of it. So yeah, let's just jump in and start looking at them. I have my computer right here with all the photos on it. I will pop up the photos just on the screen as we go through, but let's just, I want to go through and like take a look at each one and just give a little feedback on it and then I will decide what our top five is. So this first one comes from Aiden Collins and it's a pretty in-depth scene actually. We have a Flame Marine, the uh, anniversary Flame Marine, torching a old articulation Flood Elite, which is a pretty nice figure. There's popcorn everywhere. I like the little fusion coil there. In the background, there are some Marines on a mongoose, and there's a crashed ghost as well. I don't see the ghost's pilot. I wonder what happened to him. The thing that really stuck out to me about this picture is the fact that there's the flame piece on the golden flamethrower, which Mega doesn't actually make those pieces work together. Oh, hello, sir. Where did you come from? Wasp got in here somehow. Um, Mega doesn't make those flame pieces work with that. So Aiden has actually sticky tacked that on. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, shooting with grass in the background is always tricky because it's very busy. And then it's always my personal preference to make the photos look as much like it's a real thing as possible. So that means blocking out stuff in the background like cars or um, power line poles, stuff like that. But that's just something that comes with, with time. I do really like how much is fit into this photo. The angle is good. I, I like this one. It's really good. Very, very strong start. The next one comes from Aiden Phillips. We have like three Aidens in this lineup. And this is kind of working with the grass. He's got a little convoy here. Chief looks like he's leading a couple Marines, Stacker, and that perfect Hornet ODST. And then in the background, we've got an Elite and a Grunt kind of spying on them. I don't know if they're preparing an ambush or just watching, but this is pretty cool. Um, the focus is interesting because it's all the way in the back of the line. I probably would have put it at the front on Chief, but at the same time, it does allow our two enemy figures in the background to be seen. Um, and it is definitely very busy. The grass makes things very busy, but I think it works pretty well in this case because it's like they're trekking through a jungle. So that's pretty cool. And then this one is just from Aiden. That's the only name I have for it. And this is all old articulation figures. Now, the premise of this contest was like, use your fam favorite figure. But I think that got a little bit lost, which again, that was kind of my fault. I should have made the rules a little clearer. So we're just going to roll with it. But we've got a red Hayabusa. Looks like he's taken down a normal elite and now he's fighting the silver guy. It honestly looks like he's blocking the elite's blow with his hand while he's retrieving his sword. It looks like it was also shot with either the flash or just direct... Uh, direct light on it so it's a bit bright but I do really like the way that the Hayabusa is posed his head is like tilted and the way he's angled a little bit 
I don't know. It just it works out. It it's there's there's not a ton going on, but the kind of story behind it shows up pretty well. Oh, this one comes from Animator X Studios. This one is pretty cool. There's first of all, I don't typically ever work with real water in photos. I just find it to be a pain. So anytime I see somebody doing that, I think it's pretty neat. Um, and this one is very kind of, it's, it's kind of sad. First of all, Chief is wearing some, uh, looks like marine shoulder armor maybe. And he's got a backpack, so it looks like he's been through something that damaged his armor. And then we have Fred's helmet over there on the gun. So apparently Fred has fallen. And I really like what's going on here. I like the way that rain is kind of added in. Um, I probably would have made the whole scene a little bit more blue, but overall, I really like it. I like all the water. It helps sell the rain effect more when the figure is wet. I personally have a hard time with rain effects. So I think this turned out uh, pretty good, actually. This comes from Asher S. So it looks like we've got some multiplayer action going on here. There is a Gungoose. They've got the flag. They're running with the flag. And <laughs> there's this one, the one guy is getting splattered by the Gungoose. That's pretty cool. And then Fred in the background is running after, trying to get the flag desperately. And then we have a little EVA down at the bottom getting just mown down by the soldier on the back of the gun goose. I like this setup. I, uh, like I was saying, getting the figures to look like they're real and getting down on their level is pretty important. But sometimes getting a higher up angle is really good. And I think this is a pretty good example of that. To see the whole scene, we kind of need to be up here. And it also gives a bit of a sense of scale almost. So I like this, I think it's pretty cool. I like how the gun goose is posed, turning. There's tons of action going on. I can kind of feel the movement for the whole picture. It's easy to do these large, more well, in my mind, anything more than two figures is kind of a larger photo setup. And it's easy to have anybody beside your, like you have your main figure, you pose them well and then everybody else is just kind of stagnant looking. But there's action going on for this entire thing, and I really like it. This one comes from Cameron Diaz. Diaz? I'm gonna butcher so many of these names, so I apologize in advance. This one is really simple. We have some rocks, and we have some elites. But the light angle is really good. He picked a great time to get these figures out for a photo shoot. Um, and... Also, the Elite is like an unarmored Elite, so he's kind of in casual casual gear almost. And then this is a good example of getting on the figure's level. It looks to scale, the rocks look like they can be to scale, and they're just kind of there. It looks like they're maybe watching, or they're on lookout or something. I like this. I like this a lot. It looks like... Uh... It looks almost like there's a little bit of paint on the Elite's forearm, but I can't quite tell. But yeah, there's not action going on here, not really, but it looks really nice and it kind of has a pretty nice atmosphere to it. Ah, this one comes from Connor Gamble, AKA Toilsome Tub. So this is a really nice setup. There's a lot going on. There's a lot for me to like look through. So just starting off in the corner, we have a Marine all loaded up in an exosuit that looks to be custom. It's like the prototype exosuit, but it's loaded up with a bunch of extra weapons. Then we have a custom Spartan. That's a pop and swap with Spartan Griffin and the garrison pack uh, Spartan. And he's being passed a laptop, which probably has some important intel uh, by this Marine. There's one of the power seed collectors or whatever you call that. And then just some UNSC crates. And there's some barbed wire in the background, which is pretty cool. That's a Call of Duty piece. And then in the background, there are some enemy figures. There's a grunt and an elite that look dead. 
And then there is a... The, uh, the Elite Warlord is back there. But he almost looks like he's still alive and maybe trying to get up. So I'm not really sure if he's... If he is alive or if he's just dead and slumped over. And then also something else that caught my eye is the little ammo box with the ammo belt in it. That's pretty cool. I just really like how this is all framed. There is a story going on here and it's pretty clear, but I don't know the story in its entirety and that makes it interesting to me. So this comes from Duckboy0963 and we have another exosuit, which is, wow, it's kind of almost, almost outmatched. We have two hunters, but there are two more Spartans. The Spartans from the um, building box are there to help. And they're really going at that hunter. The Gungnir is like shooting him and stabbing him at the same time. I really like the use of the old Mega Constructs flame piece as the muzzle flare for that one hunter, the one on the right. And then there's a crash pelican in the background. And then there's a bunch of Marines some of which look to be... Uh, oh, there's a vehicle there. There is... Yeah, there's like a... Is that a spade or a warthog? There's some marines in that, and then there's some just trekking through the grass. I really like the, the, the posing of this. I really like the setup. The lighting, I'm not totally sold on. It's very bright on like the lower section, and not so much on the higher section. Maybe it looks like it was shot at night? which is interesting. Night photography is interesting. Oh, the Marines are also on Mongees. Okay, so that's why they're like tilted. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not totally sold on the lighting, but I do really love the posing and the setup. And I like the use of the old like Mega Constructs terrain pieces. That's pretty cool. Just the lighting is a little odd to me. Alrighty, our next one comes from Elias Kemp and there's a lot going on. So we've got a duel between Chief and Arbiter happening in the foreground and then kind of in the middle background we have two chieftains just absolutely wailing on each other with these gravity hammers uh and then even further in the background it looks like there's a custom brute stalking an odst who looks very very terrified or oh no that's a marine sorry yeah it's a marine in the background being stalked by that brute so a lot going on. There's like three different stories happening in one picture, which I find interesting. Um, it might have been, it might have been more um, effective to split those stories into three different photos, but I do like the idea of putting them all together. I like the use of dirt. This is like the kind of dirt that I always look for when I'm trying to do photos. It's just perfectly scaled to the figures. Um, the background, so we stop looking at the, basically the, the scenes that are going on at the brute in the far back. And then past that, there's a lot of empty space that has sky and like a trailer and mountains and whatnot. Um, that's a lot of dead space. That's not really needed. You could cut off the whole top part of the photo and you would still have all of your stories there. So angling your camera, I would say, to keep the, that dead space from happening because when you're looking at the photo, you want the people looking at it to see your, your stories that you're trying to tell, not necessarily the background, although the clouds do look pretty fantastic. This next one comes from Ezekiel Snegoski. I really hope that's correct. If it's not, then again, I apologize. This one, I really like. It plays with perspective a lot. This wasp in the back. There's, right in the foreground, as soon as I look at this picture, I see uh, Jago. He is there, you see his energy sword. It's cutting through a good half of the picture and creates an instant, like, huge presence. And then we finally can look past that to our, our heroes. I think this one is called something like I don't think there's going to be an extraction. So it looks like there's a wounded ODST. They have obviously been in a battle. Maybe the Warthog is not even working. That's why they're not trying to run away. And then we have the Halo Heroes Trailblazer. Looks like he's preparing to uh, fight Jaga, but it doesn't look like he's real hopeful. Um, 
the lighting as a whole doesn't look like any editing was done to it. Actually, this photo as a whole doesn't look like there was any editing done to it, which with no editing, it's really good. I really like it. The sense of dread is very there. Um, I definitely would have edited the color just because it's a very normal kind of color. I would have, uh, I don't know, I would have done something with the color, but that's kind of more my personal opinion. Also too, this is in the grass, but it's all set up in a way where the grass really isn't causing any problem. It kind of fits well. I really like this one. The, the posing, the framing, all of it is really, really well done. Ooh, this is another one that stuck out to me while I was downloading them. This is from Finn Astier. And this is a whole little setup. So again, I don't work often with water with my figures, but this is really nice. So he's put a little dock. Looks like he's built a dock. He's put it there. There's a little boat floating with an engine and everything. And these Marines are loading up a crate. Looks like they're going to try and put it in the boat. I don't know how they're going to fit that in the boat and have them get in the boat and have their Spartan friend go in the boat. But that's pretty cool. And then we have a Spartan keeping watch. That's the other Halo Heroes Trailblazer. He's got a target, a target designator, looks like. And then there's a battle rifle on his back. And he's got a plasma pistol on his hip, which is really cool. I think that might be sticky tacked on there. I can't quite tell. It's very well hidden. It's just really good. And I like the lighting, too. There's still some dead space up at the top. But I think that's okay. I like being able to see farther out over like the water so we can see it's more of an obstacle for the figures. Yeah, I like this one a lot. This one's really good. Very, very well done. This next one comes from Halo Hayden. This is pretty cool because the main figure here is a custom Mark Seven in this like dark red. And then it looks like the battle rifle is, it's either a customized mega one or it's a 3D printed one. And this is like a very tight in uh, image. It looks like there's some sort of a vehicle off to the left. There's a fallen Marine. And then we've got a squad of Marines in the background. It looks like some little fireworks were used because we have what looks like some bullets, but or like just sparks, but I think it's made using fireworks. That's pretty cool. The only thing here that is a little odd to me is the amount of space we have at the bottom of the image, and then the Spartan's head is really close to the top. I don't know that the huge amount of space at the bottom benefits the photo necessarily, but it's not, it's not like glaringly off. I do love that Mark 7 though. Mark 7, first of all, is just perfect but this dark red is really nice and it has a very weathered look. I like it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Again, just the bottom part with all this extra space is a little odd to me. So this is from Hunter David three. This is the, uh, Zvezda from the, what was that? The Fiesta helmet. And it looks like he's just up on like a cinder block and he is dual wielding manglers. Manglers. Mauler is the new one. Mangler is the old one. So Manglers. He's got two Manglers. He is dual wielding them. Uh, I do like his pose. His pose is fantastic. Uh, the amount that I can see the background, I'm not sold on. But I do like how he's posed. I like how we're almost below him. Like just enough to give him the look of height. And then the lighting overall is pretty good it's very nice and even so that all is good i definitely would have just like cropped in a lot more when i was shooting this looks like it was shot on a phone so maybe shooting it instead of straight up and down shooting it horizontally would have helped with that just a thought this wasp needs to go get a light whoops i have skipped this is from hutch Thompson. This is another one that is using the grass to kind of make a jungle, which like I said, what we've seen before, grass is busy, but it works out here. It actually works out really well. And I'm, I'm not typically a fan of using grass. Like I said, I use more of like the dirt and dust, 
but this works out really nicely. So we've got the new red team hog here with a couple of Marines. Looks like the Marine, uh, the Marines maybe were the ones driving. And then Jerome is standing on top and then Alice and Douglas are off in the background. Looks like they're maybe trying to meet up with more UNSC or they're trying to find their way. They do look a little bit lost. The one Marine in the driver's seat looks a little perplexed, like they're not sure where to go. So I think this is really good. The lighting is very nice and even. It's a good, like probably a cloudy, more cloudy day. And it just provides really nice, even light. And I do like the posing. I like how there's multiple layers here. We've got all the grass in the foreground kind of framing it. We have the Marine that's not quite in focus. And then the Marine that is in focus. And then Jerome who's in focus. And then Alice and Douglas in the background, giving us something to look past to. Cause like you could block out those two and the photo would still be good, but having them in the background just gives us something else to look for. It's a great way to keep your eyes moving through the scene. So this one is really well done. This one comes from Jackson Walker. So this is another close one that has the enemy like really in to the frame. So we have a good third of the frame blocked by an elite. And then we have the EOD from the armor pack looking very cool. It looks like he's been actually pop and swapped with a uh, Mark IV. Looks like there's maybe a Marine behind him. I see some boots. And then in the farther background, I think I see a dead grunt. There's a little bit of like mega constructs and grass and like leaves and then some pillars. And then there's a brute who has a customized head to give him that mohawk. That's pretty cool. The EOD is occupied with the elite. So I don't know if he's going to see that brute coming. There's some nice editing going on here. There's a little bit of like particle effect. There's a little bit of a glow for the EODs. Um, eyes, there's a little bit of a glow happening on the plasma rifle and even on the grab hammer. So this is really nice. There's like a really good one, two, three sort of spacing. Um, the Marine to me is unnecessary because I can't really see him. I think it would be fine just with the Spartan. And then the grunt in the background is fine. Even though I can't see him, I think, I think it's a, a decent, like, thing to have in the background because the background stuff, you know, you, you're supposed to look at the photo longer for seeing the background stuff. The Marine, I just think is a little unnecessary. But other than that, I really like this. I do like too how low it is and how the background is mostly blocked out. It's pretty hard to tell, you know, what's going on in the background. There's just like some walls and stuff. So that's really good. I like this. And it's an EOD. EODs are pretty cool. So this one comes from Jeremiah Chu. Again, if I'm mispronouncing these, I don't sue me. So first of all, this is a series five Arbiter. I actually have him over here. So we'll, we'll bring him out. Series five Arbiter, who's just come down in one of the old drop pods. He's landed in another kind of jungly looking area. Um, he's in the dirt and it's kind of broken up. So it looks almost like an impact. I would have dug a little bit into the dirt and made like a little crater because it looks soft enough for that. Uh, it looks like there's probably an enemy off screen because Arbiter's got his sword up and he's prepared. Um, but there's not a ton else going on. It is a very nice showcase for Arbiter. There's just not a ton of a, uh, a story here. I do like the lighting. I do like the fact that it's an old drop pod. I don't see those old covenant drop pods being used in photos very much so that that's a bonus for sure but yeah i definitely would have done an impact mark um at least to show that the pod had just landed the positioning of the door part though is on point it definitely looks like it fired off kind of maybe hit the ground and just tumbled that's pretty good so this next photo is from joan lagoons again if i'm mispronouncing the last name, I apologize. So this is kind of an inverse of what we've seen before with the enemy figure in the foreground. Here we have Master Chief in the foreground. He looks like he's standing on, I don't know what that is. Maybe just a piece of rubble, maybe an enemy that he took down. But instead of the 
you know, the enemy being the foreground, Chief is the foreground, and then in the background we see a lot of enemies. A lot. The, like, description that came with this photo was that this was sort of a play on, like, the idea of Noble Six's last stand, but instead it's Chief. So there's just overwhelming odds, and Chief is standing here, but it doesn't, he doesn't look very concerned. Like, his posing looks like he's ready. His gun is even still on his back, so he's not even so concerned as to pull his gun off yet. He's kind of got his hand on his hip, so he looks prepared. He looks like he's ready to go head on with this. But I just love how out of focus all of the enemies are because you have kind of have to look a little bit more and that also helps keep the background from being um, too immersion breaking. But I can see there's like one of those lookout towers there. There's a bunch of elites. Looks like some jackals maybe, maybe some brutes as well. I think this is pretty cool. I like the framing of this a lot. I like how there's pretty much something for me to look at on every level and then the only empty space is in the middle which makes sense yeah the lighting is a little bit on the bright side like a little bit too harsh in some spots but overall i think it's pretty good this next one comes from josiah sturkenberg and it looks like chief has just finished beating up craig craig is not having a good day he is just completely out and chief is standing triumphantly on top of him this looks like it's just using the Chief versus Craig pack, which is pretty cool. I like the idea of just taking one set and using just the one set for photos because you're kind of limited and it makes you think a little bit more. So I like the posing of this a lot. I like the framing of it. I like how the grab hammer is really close to the camera, like Craig just dropped it. Um, there is a little too much space on the left side, I would say. I think the whole scene should be a little more centered. And then the background is a little bit distracting because I have the story of Chief beating Craig and then the background with the house kind of breaks my immersion a little bit. Um, you know, just thinking through what is my background going to be as I'm shooting. Sometimes that means you have to shoot from a little higher up. Sometimes that means you just have to rotate enough so that that's not in the background. But I do like this. I do like the lighting. I think the angle with the light coming down from behind Chief is good. It kind of gives him more of a heroic cast. And then I think he used some clay to keep uh, keep Chief in that position, which is very good because I tried doing poses like that and it is so hard to keep them in that, that position without clay. But it's also white clay, so it almost looks like Craig's other hand, and so that kind of helps hide it. So this one's very well done. This one comes from Katie Stern, and this is another really simple one. We just have some rocks, and then we have the um, recon from the... Why did the name just go right out of my head? The Banshee Breakout. Just got a sniper rifle. He's not about to shoot it, though. He's just holding it by the barrel. Clearly, he is either just on lookout duty, or he's just taking a break. The light is very midday. It's a little harsh, but I think with the setting here of like the rocks and the little moss and stuff that works out. Um, I do like the setting too. It matches the figure. Well, the figure looks like he's suited for that sort of environment. Uh, the only thing I would say in terms of the background is I see a bigger leaf and that breaks the immersion a little bit. I think if that was cut out, the rest of the picture would really just come together. And again, really nothing is going on here, but him sitting and resting, but I still think it's a pretty nice photo and just sometimes that's what your story needs is no action and clearly he's just here chilling for a little bit so I like this. This next one is from Kieran Turner and this is kind of uh, almost a little diorama so we have I'm assuming this is a like a little mini fob build uh, so the we just saw the Banshee Breakout um, uh, Recon, and now he is dead. Jaga has gotten to everybody here. There doesn't look like there's any survivors. There are some little brick-built pine trees in the background, which I really like. And all these Marines have just been utterly just destroyed. Looks like this was made with the building box too, or building box plus something else. The only thing here 
that I'm not sold on is the background. Again, the background, it's very difficult to remember to pay attention to the background to make sure that it's not distracting or immersion breaking. Here, I think the grass green is a little too much. I think even blue sky would have been better, but ideally probably what I personally would have done is gotten a screen and gotten some mountains and put those in the background as you know what we're looking at. As it is, it's not bad. It's just the amount of green uh, in the photo as a whole is a little overwhelming because we have a green fob, we have green trees, we have green marines, green spartan, and a green background. So it's just, it's a lot of green. However, on the flip side, that does put Jega in a good contrast. So I do like how just, he's just walking. He's done his work and he's probably just leaving now and leaving this just absolute carnage behind. So this one comes from Killer Rays. So this looks like a custom brute of some sort. He's got a jump pack and then there's a Spartan in the background with an energy sword. It looks like it's actually glowing. It's like maybe use some kind of light. And then there's another Spartan in the background as well. Um, it's very dark as a whole. The angle makes it difficult to tell what's fully going on, which can be helpful sometimes. But in this case, I think we definitely should have been a little lower down and maybe the focus should have been on the Spartan with the sword instead of on the Brute, I think. And then having more light on that Spartan. It's very dark, which could be fine if there was more light on that Spartan. The Brute is very interesting though. And I do like how the sword is kind of actually casting a red glow. That's pretty nice. It's just a little hard to tell what's going on. This next one comes from Landon Burke. So we have, once again, grass being used as like a jungle. It's working out pretty well here. I am actually kind of a fan of it. And then we're using pretty much the entire hive pack for this. This is pretty cool. So Tarkov is in the foreground. It looks like he's motioning to something. And then the other ODSTs in the background are like all looking, maybe their extraction vehicle is coming in for them something like that but i like this i like the visor glows they're a little bit harsh they're not fully well blended with the um the whole scene but i do like visor glows i'm kind of a sucker for visor glows i add them way too many like there are some photos i do that really don't need visor glows and i add them anyway they're just cool this is another one. There's not a ton of action happening, but I really like it because there's clearly something happening off screen. And I keep looking at it because I'm I'm just looking and seeing what the figure's reactions are and just like kind of wondering. So I like that. The lighting is pretty well done. Uh, it's just natural lighting. Looks like cloudy day. That's sometimes the best lighting you can get is just normal, even cloudy day lighting. Yeah, not overly complicated, but I really like it. I like how the ODSTs are kind of in almost a V shape because it keeps my eye moving throughout the photo. Yeah, everything is framed by the grass nicely as well. Our next photo comes from Manuel de la Mora. And this is just a simple duel between Arbiter and Chief. And it looks like we've got the, uh, the Wasp Chief on the one side and then Arbiter from, um, that's the uh, Arbiter's Quest version of Arbiter. And it's just a duel. And it's pretty nice. I like it. I like that um, the way that the light is, the energy swords kind of catch it and glow a little bit. And then the posing is pretty nice. It almost looks like the way Chief is, it looks like he's almost using two hands. Um, Arbiter is just kind of casually blocking his blow. So it kind of looks like Arbiter has the upper hand here for the moment at least this one though i will say and this is with as with many of the other ones i've looked at is the upper background is a little distracting because i can see it looks like maybe a playground or something and then some street lights and it breaks the immersion a little bit because i'm like looking at uh arbiter i'm looking at chief and they're fighting and then i look up a little bit and then there's like normal life stuff 
and that just breaks the immersion a little bit. I do love the posing though. I think that's fantastic. And the, the light is also really good. Again, it's just natural lighting, but it's not too harsh. Looks like it's maybe in the shadow and it's, it's pretty well done. Also interesting that Arbiter's shoulder armor is actually upside down. I don't know if that was purposeful or not, but it almost looks like he could get more of a range of movement in his shoulder with it upside down. I might have to try that now, actually. This next one comes from Marine Studios, and this one plays a lot with the focus. So mainly what we see is the um, Marine here, which looks like a pop and swap, actually. Yeah, it looks like a custom pop and swap using Garrison Pack Marine or um, uh, the Gungus Gambit Marine, adding some extra parts on. The Calm backpack is like the first thing we see, and then we see past that to the oncoming enemies. There's an Elite, and there's a couple Brutes, and it looks like a Grunt. Um, and then the, the farther background just looks like Woods, so... That is a win, and we got some nice bokeh there. I like this one because it's it's not um, not quite what we saw earlier, where the dread comes from the figure in the foreground, but we are definitely feeling this sense of like there's only one marine here, and there is at least four enemies, so there's kind of this sense of impending doom. And I like how the figures look, the ones in the background, look like they're coming at us. Also, that one brute using a human shotgun, that's pretty cool too. I don't often see people do that in their photos. And I don't often do that in my photos either. I'm like, give the brutes their weapons, the elites their weapons, the humans their weapons. But I like that because in Infinite, the brutes do use human weapons actually a, a fair bit. So that's pretty cool. I like this. So this next one comes from Martin117, and this is pretty neat. Uh, it is a little bit lower quality, so I would like to definitely be able to see it bigger, but it gets a little pixelated. However, the whole setup is really nice. It's There's like a diorama base going on here with like flagstones. Um, the tree, I can't tell if the tree leaves are CG on or not. I kind of want to say that they are, but it's really well done. The trunk, I think, is not CG. But the leaves are, and then there's kind of a Japanese gate. The background is mostly green. I kind of can make out some stuff, but it's vague enough that I can kind of just write it off as more things, like more... Um, more structures in the background. I can see the weapon off to the side though, so that breaks the immersion a little bit. And then the fact that this stand is there breaks it a little bit as well. However, that does make this picture a nice showcase for the Uroi. The floating around leaves look really nice. I just like how this captures the kind of samurai, like what we, what we think of as like the samurai art where it's like, we have the leaves, we have the gate, we have the posing with the sword. It's really good. And the way that it's uh, positioned, I can't really see the translucence in the Euroids plastic, which <laughs> that was my one huge issue with that figure. So this is really well done. I like it. First, like when I first looking at it, it makes me want to look again, just because there's so much going on. This next one comes from Marty P. And we have the orange Mark Seven obliterating a poor old articulation purple Spartan. And the effects here are pretty cool. I like the effect for um, the plasma rifle in particular. And then, interestingly, the, the old articulation figure is using a uh, commando rifle. Then we have just a extra little crate which. When you first look at it, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but I am a big fan of just throwing in random you know, crates, uh, I don't know, anything, sandbags, uh, that sort of thing to make the scene feel a little bit more complete. And then the jumping Spartan is actually what really impressed me here. 
Because I can't quite tell how he's up in the air. I think he was standing on something and then that was cut out. But I can't exactly pinpoint where it was cut out. And so I call that a win. Whenever I can't tell how something's floating in a photo, I think that's pretty good. There's a lot of empty space here, though. A lot of empty space in the upper left corner. I think something could have been put there. There's enough space at a... I don't know, you could throw in more crates, something to make the scene feel a little bit more complete. Right now, it feels like I don't need all that extra space. It, it's not lending anything to the story. But I do like the posing here. I do like the fact that it's the new articulation versus the old articulation. Um, it's kind of an unfair fight, but it is pretty funny. So this comes from Master Chief XPZ. And this is another edited rain shot. So the picture as a whole is a little bit dark and a little bit out of focus, which by itself, that would be like, eh, I'm not sure about that. However, he edited in rain and the rain edit makes the lighting look like we're, honestly, it makes me think of like, we are in this squad. It looks like they're looking back in kind of a worried way. There's light coming from that direction. So it makes me think they're being chased. Um, and then the way that the photo is framed, it almost feels like I'm in the squad, I'm wearing one of their helmets, and I'm looking back to make sure that my team is following me. So, this is pretty nice. I like it a lot, actually. A lot more than I thought when I, like, when I first looked at this, I wasn't so sure about it. But the more I'm looking at it, I'm like, the, the story is very apparent, and the lighting works for it and the visor glows are done pretty well too they're very dulled down very like halo 3 odst feeling and then yes there's a lot of grass but none of it really breaks my immersion it almost looks like there's a path there going off into the darkness so i think this is pretty well done even though it's it's dim and it's a little bit blurry it kind of helps put me into the scene like i'm actually there with them this next one is from McDeath Squads. We've got the SDCC uh, Combat Evolved Chief versus two Hunters, which I think Chief has his work cut out for him here. But the one Hunter looks like he's already on the back foot. I guess because Chief does have the uh, CE Magnum. Just pop, pop, and they're gone. Um, I like this. I like the, the kind of trio of figures as kind of a triangle to look at in terms of the way the picture is framed. The stands break the immersion a little bit for me and then the background is a little bit busy. Uh, but that's not, it's not really like horribly immersion breaking. I just think in particular, these poses could have been pulled off without the stands with just a little bit of fiddling. So maybe removing the stands would have been better. That might just be my opinion, but um, I do, I do like this and it makes me jealous. I don't have any of those blue hunters and they're such a pain to find these days. Mega really should re-release them. So this next one comes from Mishak Chaney. Hopefully I'm not pronouncing that wrong. I'm pretty sure that he submitted something like questions or something before and I also mispronounced the name. So this one's really interesting to me because there are stands, but the stands are not breaking my immersion. That's probably because they're really buried and that the terrain bits are also on um, stands. And so that kind of helps. So we've got a Spartan who looks to be a custom. Really am liking this custom. It's very clean. I like the gray with just a little bit of yellow. It's really nice. And I also like these just column builds. They add a really good frame to the picture and just square everything up real nice. We have a lot of fallen figures. Uh, they have some blood too, looks like with clay. There's like some pinkish clay on the side for, I don't know if that's human blood or what. The orange blood for the jackal is there. The blue blood for the elite is there. In the background, it looks like maybe there's still something going on. There's like a crash mongoose. It looks like maybe a marine medic back there. He's got a red shoulder pad, so I think he's a medic going to take care of some of those uh, fallen marines. And so 
This Spartan maybe is looking at their Pelican coming in to pick them up, or watching a Phantom leave, or just stopping and getting his breath after the fight. I really do like this. The background is a little bit immersion breaking just because I think that's a shelf that I can see. But other than that, I really like how this is framed. And it's also just, it's really sharp. I can zoom in and I can look in detail at the figure and it's not real blurry. So I, I like that a lot. I, I have a feeling this was shot on an actual like DSLR camera. Um, if you're watching, maybe comment what you shot this with. That would be really cool. So this next one comes from Mikey Payne, which his name was actually longer, but I can't put the full name on here. Um, this is pretty cool because we have a whole bunch of brutes literally just dogpiling a Spartan. Or, yeah, I think it's a Spartan, but he's got like the ODST gloves. So it's like a pop and swap. It looks like he's been custom painted. It's a uh, JFO. And they're literally just dogpiling him. Craig is there trying to punch him. The other brute that's coming up, he's flipped the grab hammer around to use the blade. That's pretty brutal. These other brutes are just kind of looking on too. Like they know they've won and they're just watching the, uh, the carnage happen. And then of course we have a victor in the background and he doesn't care about the fight. He's just standing there because he was told to stand there because he's got the weapons. So he's just there. Yeah, this has like a really desperate feel to it. I like the way it's framed. There's nothing here in the frame that like breaks the immersion for me. The ground fits. It's kind of poxed, so it looks like a war-torn landscape. And I like too how the Spartan is framed at the bottom. Easily that could have been in the middle or off to one side or the other, but the Spartan is at the bottom and all the brutes are mainly at the top. It kind of makes me feel the weight of all of the enemies that this Spartan is facing. And it looks like a pretty hopeless battle, unfortunately. But the framing, the way that that's all put together, I really like that. It, it really looks like they're just piling on top of him. And I think that works out really well for the feel that this photo is going for. This next one is from Multiversal Productions. And this is another one where the action isn't happening yet. Looks like this action is going to happen. So we have a JFO Spartan with some minor customizations, it looks like. It's been pop and swapped. It's got a like Mark 7 waist and then like the tan forms and lower legs. There's like some straps. He's got something, uh, a DMR strapped across his back and then a Magnum. That is a really nice, uh, wait, did I call that JFO? That that's an operator, not a JFO. I don't remember if I said JFO or not. That is a really nice JFO um, helmet. I need to get mine out for some photos. Then we've got a dog here, which is pretty cool. I don't often see these dogs used in Halo photos, so I like that. And then we have a sniper jackal hiding in this little cave here. Looks like he's waiting to jump out at them. His eyes are glowing, which makes him look even more terrifying. And then also, the ground is really interesting. It almost looks like sand mixed in with like little bits of grass. And it all scales really well. The only thing I'm not sold on is the whatever's in the background on the far um, left side. I would have put another rock there to cover that up. But the lighting is really good too. I like how it's toned down. It gives me very like movie scene vibes and it's making the visor on the, the JFO catch the light just really nicely. It, it's all framed together really nice. And it's like that moment right before the chaos is gonna happen because in another second after this, the Spartan is gonna spot the Jackal or the dog is gonna smell the Jackal or the Jackal is just gonna jump out and then we're gonna have a fight on our hands. But right now it's that one tense moment in between. So this one comes from Nick Lee. And the first thing that struck me about this image is the figure. Um, it's hard to see the figure a little bit because of the image quality. I don't know if Gmail, because I had all these images um, emailed to me. I don't know if Gmail lowered the scale or if that was just how it was shot. But it's a mix of Call of Duty and Halo. We've got like the undersuit. The upper part is the undersuit for one of the divers. 
And then the helmet is the like dare helmet. Then the figure has just the Call of Duty like vest. And then the lower part is uh, like, I think it's the Garrison Marine legs. And then the figure's got a saw. So this is a really interesting pop and swap to me. The background is definitely a little busy. I think it's a little too busy. I would have put this somewhere else and put the figure so I could see the ground that the figure is standing on. Maybe even gotten a little closer so that like me as a viewer, I don't feel like I can fully appreciate this custom because it's a little far away from me. But I do really like the custom. I like the mix of like the, the metallic colors and the Call of Duty metallic blue gray matches the um, Garrison Marines pretty well, actually. This wasp needs to really go away. Okay, so this comes from Oliver Padsoul, and this is a really, really wide out shot, and there's a lot going on. So I want to start kind of on the right, which doesn't make sense. You're supposed to go from left to right, but we're going to start on the right anyway, because I see a Gungnir up there sniping down at the battlefield. It looks like he's hitting a brute, actually. And there's a couple things about that. First of all, the sniping position is on point, not only just to the, the choice of location up high like that, but also the way that he's holding the rifle. And there's a muzzle flare on it. And again, that's one of those weapons that Mega does not allow muzzle flares to like fit onto. And it's been sticky tacked on, which works out really really well so i like that and then we have hmm, it looks like a marine a fallen marine kind of in the middle ground the brute that's being sniped uh there's a spartan that is currently tangling with a hunter there's another fallen marine who looks like he has bro hammer's head hmm. there's a lot of fallen marines good grief a lot of the marines have just already died here there is the uh, halo hero series 11 operator fighting the Halo Heroes Brute Chieftain, which looks really good. Uh, that operator actually used to be my sig fig until this guy came out. Uh, now this guy fills that spot. And then there is a, uh, actually I think it's this dude, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's this guy, this uh, Spartan Scout, the red one from this armor pack is over there just absolutely point blanking Craig in the face with a bulldog, poor Craig. And then, wait, can I zoom in? How high quality is this image? Oh, it's actually pretty nice. I can zoom in more. Farther back, we have that red EVA with a chain gun just obliterating another brute, which again, the chain gun, it should accept a muzzle flare but it's ever so slightly too small to actually hold it on there. So I think it's again, sticky tack, which I think is pretty good. I like this because it's like a whole battle scene, whole diorama. I like the choice of location too. It's just the, uh, the grass and then the bits of wood break the immersion a little bit. But for the most part, it's one of those images that you have to really look at to get the whole story. And there's kind of multiple things happening. So I like it. And the lighting is also it's nothing like standout, but it's again, just that nice, even outdoor lighting. So this is one of the ones that came in a little late. This is from Omar. And this has just a couple CE Marines. And then it looks like a battle for the Ark Marine in the farther foreground. And he's just kind of there standing and waiting. He's got a spanker. And then there's the other guy who just has an AR. Um, this is a little odd to me because it's tilted. So. Typically, a tilt, it's called like a Dutch tilt. That's, I guess that's more of a filmmaking term, but that's kind of how I think of it when I'm doing photos too. When you tilt one way or the other, typically that um, implies confusion or just like some offness to the scene. And this, there's nothing about this that makes me feel like it's off. Yeah, I'm just not totally sure that the, the tilt was needed here. I do like the like inside of the bush though. I like that. I like the fact that it's shot like inside of a bush or something. I think that looks pretty cool. The tilt just kind of makes me feel off balance, and it just is a bit at odds with the overall peaceful feel of this photo. So this next one is from Probo Animations, and this one is really 
really gritty. First of all, the framing is all really, really good. Um, the fact that I can see a little bit of grass up in the top right corner is a little bit jarring to me since it's so gritty. I think maybe just cropping that out would have helped. But there's a lot going on. We've got a Gungnir front and center firing a shotgun that has a massive blast. There's a fallen ODST and a fallen marine. There's a big giant purple laser blast flying by um, from who knows what. Something off screen. There's a dead jackal in front of this trench. And there's looks like another ODST further on. And then there's like the pillars of dirt being thrown up, which are definitely an effect, but I really like. And I especially like how there's green all over the ground, like um, plasma is hitting it or something. I really like the trench set up as a whole. I really like how dirty the figures are in particular. That really sells the fact that this is like in a war uh, scenario. So this one's really good. And also the way that it's kind of... Um, the like the aspect ratio makes me think of a film aspect ratio so it makes me think that it's almost like a still from a movie so that's really well done the grass is really the only thing that i think could have been improved here the rest of this is is really well put together and we have robert lee with the kestrel strike war master he's very confident he's got this giant i think it's a binary rifle and he's completely surrounded by Prometheans. There's even a knight there. And he's just completely unconcerned. He's just waiting for them to get closer so he can take them out. I like this. It's very direct sunlight. It's very hard to shoot in light like this because it's just so harsh. It makes things glare a little bit. But it works out here. It's like just on the edge of being too bright, but it's, it's right there. So it's pretty good. Um, the rocks don't scale super well with the figure but it's not super unbelievable either that there would be rocks that big. And then I also like the addition of the little Promethean weapons rack too. So I think this one's pretty well done. Um, maybe making the War Master look a little bit more ready to shoot, but I don't know, aside from that, I think it's pretty well done. So the next one is from Stopmo Pro, and this one is a fairly simple like portrait pretty much of uh ramos what is he ramos he has a backpack and then he's got a marine forearm so he's been popping swapped a little bit oh wait a minute he's actually got an entire marine arm so he's been popping swapped a little bit and it looks like he's almost the the posing makes me think he's lost or something maybe looking for his his squad the background, again, is a little bit uh, immersion breaking just because there's like a house. But I do like how sharp this image is because like, I can zoom in, I can see the Ramos print and it's nice to be able to just zoom into an image like that. So that's pretty nice. There's just not much going on. I would have liked to see maybe some support material in the background, like some crates or a vehicle parked in the background or even those like girder pieces that Mega has, those are great for just slapping the background just to make things a little more interesting to build up a story. It just feels a little bit um, lacking anything to make me wanna keep looking at the photo aside from the fact that the, sh the focus is so sharp on the ODST, but my eye doesn't really move through the image because there's not really anything for my eye to move to. But again, the focus is spot on and the lighting is also pretty pretty good too like nothing about it is making me go oh that that needed to be changed i just would have liked to see a little bit more detail this next one is from sword elite animations and we have a old old style drop pod the kind of the opening doors and an old articulation odst those those guys were interesting they had funny helmets also that battle rifle that is a nice battle rifle huh okay so yeah, it looks like the drop pod has just come down. We can see a little bit of the door off to the left side. It's just barely in frame. The ODST has hopped out. It looks like he's walking away from his pod. He's just got his rifle up. He's not very concerned, so apparently he hasn't dropped right into a combat zone. Um, the grass here is pretty big, so it is covering a lot, and it's 
lot um a lot out of proportion with the figure but i do like the the jungle vibe to it although i'm not sure why a white odsd would be dropping into the jungle but yeah this this framing is very much like the arbiter photo we saw earlier with the pod like off to the back and then the odsd in the front that's pretty nice he's kind of partially out of frame so it gives me the impression that he's walking out and then he's going to be out of the frame this moment. so i like that and it's not often that i see people still doing photos with old articulation they're just so much harder to pose with so i think people tend to avoid them i do want to get my hands on like an old articulation cqb or something because those are kind of nice i do have um he's actually back behind my computer i have an old articulation pilot and that's about it well i have one spartan but i don't really keep old articulation figures very much this next one comes from the domain fan and we have again the playing around with the focus i like it we have our left and right sides i, I just i said anyway you get what i mean left and right sides um covered by an elite and a drone there's a Fallen Hunter, so these ODSTs are not doing too shabby here. Uh, a Marine has fallen, but there's a Fallen Drone. Looks like there's a Mongoose. Is that a Mongoose over there being blocked by the Elite? And there's some other UNSC stuff. We have the Hive Exterminators, ODSTs there. Tarkov has a Sniper. Um, the one guy has a Spanker. Probably why they beat the Hunter. Which, the Hunter is old articulation, too. The Hornet is landed there, which is pretty neat. Um, I haven't seen a ton of people do photos with the Hornet. It's very photogenic too. I really should take photos of mine. And then the ODSTs have visor glows too. Again, they're a little bit um, unblended and getting the blending right is difficult, but I like the fact that there is a visor glow. Um, it is interesting to me that the guy front and center has a different, um, a different glow than the other one. I honestly prefer the glow that the other two have a little bit more. It's a little more subtle and a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more a part of the image as a whole than the one on the guy that's front and center. And then the background does break my immersion a little bit. I think moving everything a little closer to the camera and then moving the camera back just so that we see the gray part would have been good, but for the most part, I really like how this is set up. Uh, it's just the way we have kind of like a V that guides the eye through the image. And I think that's really good. And then again, really nice, even outdoor light. I'm a fan of that. Ultra Studio. So this one stuck out to me because I think, I think, oh, well, maybe not. The, the shield, um, the shield looks like it's either paper or it was CG'd in with like scribbles. I think it was CG'd like after the fact, but I really like the effect. It's not the traditional sort of effect I see it's it's not just a glow it's actually almost it's almost giving me like like anime effect vibes and then we have an elite ultra front and center who has been customized and he now has the red markings I'd be curious to know how that was done it almost looks like dye because it's in the like stuff on the head it's in the the molded detail of the head so that's that's interesting i like that that that's pretty nice and then the sword also looks really sharp which is not something that mega swords really look like by default they're kind of rounded off on the end so that's really cool and yeah the jackal shields i really like the jackal shields chief is in the foreground just firing at the uh, ultra there's a fusion coil in the background that has the effect and then there's like the banished weapons rack which looks really nice and then the background is grass and stuff, but it's small and it's really not distracting. Like it looks like that's a little forest back there that Chief could walk into. 
and it covers everything really nicely. So that I think is a really big win for this photo is that nothing here really breaks um, the immersion to the story. I can look at it and kind of examine it and nothing pops out to me as not fitting with the the scenario that's going on. So I really like that. I, I Again, the, the way the jackal shields are done is really, really interesting. So this just comes from X, or that's, that's what the uh, email said for the name. So we have a crashed pelican in the background, and it looks like the Marines are trying to regroup after their pelican is shot down. We have a Marine already in the sniping position um, on guard. It looks like there's a Marine dragging... Um, maybe a fellow Marine who's hurt. And then you can see some more in the background. They're all set up. The one guy's messing with his comms pack. Maybe, um, maybe calling for help. There's a bit of grass in the way, but right behind the grass, there is a Sergeant Stacker standing there. I like the idea of using the Pelican. Personally, I find it difficult to shoot stuff that large and get it in place. Um, and in this case, the Pelican does help with keeping the background a little bit more realistic. There's definitely some stuff I can see over the Pelican that's a little bit like, hmm, that shouldn't be there. But I do like it. The light is really harsh. It's like midday and it looks like there's not really any clouds in the sky. Typically, that's a little bit almost offensive to look at. But something about it adds to the... Um, kind of desperate feel to the photo. It definitely looks like it would be hot in that area. So it's pretty interesting. And I really do like the way that the Pelican is positioned and how the, the wings and the engines are posed up. That really makes it look like they just came down for a hard landing, just wiped out there. This next one comes from Xavier T T Toes. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And then we have the, is that the, I always get thrown and stone break mixed up. This is stone break. Yeah, this is the stone break drop pod. It has fallen down into this jungly area using the grass again. What I like about this is it looks like the ODST is like pushing his way through the grass. He's pushing it aside to come through. So that, it, that's like working with the, plants instead of just they're in the plants he's actually like pushing his way through which sells the idea that he's in a jungle area a little bit more so i like that very simple photo but i think it's pretty effective and the last entry comes from yellow chief and this one is in the snow um so the first thing that struck me was there's a custom magnum there i don't know is that one of ls3d's or it might be a different 3D print, but this is the um, Ocean Break ODST. And he's got his little ODST knife, which that comes from a different set. Doesn't come with him. But the figure has a wash, which is really nice. It's subtle. It's hard to get a wash on a white figure right. It's really easy to get it wrong, but it looks good here. And then he's got like the asymmetrical look because one of his arms is all blue, which I really like. And then we've got the pod in the background, really buried in the snow, and then the door is in the foreground. So it looks like he came crashing down, the door popped out, and then he's just out and ready. And it almost looks like maybe he's ready, but there's nobody in range yet. So he's just staying prepared. So I like that. That's pretty nice. Very white, but the lighting is such that I can tell that there's different layers. Like it doesn't look flat. I can tell that what's in the foreground, what's in the background. So yeah, that is all 43 entries. That was a lot of photos. That was a lot of effort from you guys. And I am pretty impressed. There's a lot of really good entries and it's just great to see so many people out there taking photos because in my mind, that's what mega is really ideal for. They're so small. I mean, I can stick this guy in my pocket and I can take him wherever. And as long as I have a camera, I can get photos. And we've seen people taking me in the snow, on the rocks, out in their backyard. And, you know, I've said a lot about get, making sure your background's right and whatever. But like to start off with, 
if you're if you're new, just get out there and shoot photos. Like, don't worry about the background at first. That the stuff that I'm talking about, it'll come with practice. Like as you start getting a feel for what it's like to get out there and pose the figure and all of that, then you'll just slowly start thinking about those things more. So now I am going to go and choose our top five and then we'll be right back. And now is the moment you all have been waiting for the winner announcement or winner's announcement. I'm looking at you who skipped all the way to the end just to hear this part and skipped all of the photo stuff. I'm looking right at you. Anyway, so I have all five of the prizes here and we are going to go through starting from fifth place. So fifth place is Ultra Studios. This was a really hard choice. I was very torn for fifth place. But in the end, I ended up choosing this one because of the effects. The effects just really stood out to me. They're really unique, they're really different, and I don't see this style very often. And it just works really well. I really like how it also fits the mood of the whole picture. It's not a very dark photo. It's not a very like gritty one. It's fairly bright. The figures are fairly bright colors and the effects really matches. So congratulations, Ultra Studios. I will be contacting you very soon to arrange shipping you this purple Mark VII, literally like best color Mega has. So that is fifth place. Fourth place is Ezekiel Snagoski, Snagoski, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. This one is just really, really solid. I really like the kind of just the dread the photo has. The color grading and whatnot doesn't give that sense of dread. It's really the posing of the figures. It's the fact that the first thing we see is this looming shape of Jega and the lit energy sword. And we know he means business and we know that our two UNSC heroes are probably not making it out alive. So congratulations Ezekiel. You will be receiving ODST Ramos. Again, I will be contacting you shortly to arrange shipping this to you. And then third place is Finn Astier. Uh, this again, just the whole thing is just really good. It stuck out to me when I was first downloading all the photos and it still just sticks out. The colors, the posing, the way that there's a little dock that's actually set up and like set into the mud. It's just really nice and it's kind of a mix between it's peaceful right now, but because the Spartan is on lookout, we know that things are not quite right. So we should be a little bit tense. It's just really, really well-rounded and creative. So congratulations, Finn. You will be receiving a light of Sanghelios. I will be contacting you to arrange shipping it. And now we have come to the top two. So second place is Connor Gamble. I just really like how full this image is. There's a lot going on. I don't feel like there's any really wasted space. There's a good amount of support material. We have some interesting stuff going on, like the pop and swap Spartan. Um, the mech in the background has been modified. It's clearly after a battle. So there's kind of that lull. Um, it's just really, really well put together. I just really like how this is done. The lighting is good too, it's very vibrant. So yeah, it's really well done. Congratulations, Connor. You will be receiving a Spartan Kelly. I will be in contact with you shortly to arrange shipping this. And now we have one left. First place. I know some of you are very tempted to skip ahead right now. Your finger is hovering over that, that skip. First place is Asher S. Yes, this is not the most flashy photo out of all of them. There are some that have more effects, more color grading, more grittiness. But what really impressed me here was the way that all of the figures are in dynamic poses. The angle of the camera is such that we get to see all of it doesn't feel like there's a lot of dead space. And the gun goose posing too, like it would have been so easy to set the gun goose down 
then take this photo. But no, he even went and turned it. It's like going around the corner, splattering the one Spartan. They've got the flag. It's just really good. I just, I'm, I'm really impressed because like I said, getting a shot from the top down like this and making it look convincing is pretty difficult because these are toys. So when you're shooting them at their level, it's, it's decently easy to make them look generally believable as real, uh, real characters. But when you're shooting them from the top, they suddenly start looking like toys. And here, I don't feel like I'm looking at toys. I feel like I'm looking at a little screenshot from like a Halo multiplayer match, just because of the way things are all put together. So that is pretty impressive to me. So congratulations, Asher, you will be receiving the Spartan Haunted. I will be in contact to get this shipped to you very soon. And then I just wanna give a huge, huge thank you to all of you who entered. That was a lot of really awesome photos. I had kind of a hard time going through, like you guys don't make it easy to judge at all. But I'm, I'm really impressed by the amount of people that are out there shooting toys. And I encourage all of you guys, keep doing it. Like even if you didn't win this competition, keep doing toy photography because it's so much fun. There's so much you can do with it. And there's the really, the only real limit is what you can think of. And then I also want to just give another huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel, whether you're just watching the videos, whether you're subscribed, whether you're commenting, any of it is a massive help and I'm really grateful. I'm also really grateful for all of the channel members. I'll pop their little list up here on the screen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Yeah, 10K is absolutely blowing my mind and it, there's no sign of slowing down yet so yeah i really really appreciate it guys thank you all for all the support and i'll see you guys next time